Do you... Do you... Okay, welcome back to another episode of Southside Fishing, everybody. I'm your host, Nick. Today is the video that has been requested multiple times, and that is my rod and reel arsenal going into the 2020 season. Now, I'm kind of iffy on doing videos like this, and I'll explain why in just a second. But first, a poll on Instagram to see how many people really wanted to see a video like this. Well, apparently a lot of you did. I think it was like 99.2% said yes, and then the other said no. I guess I'll do the video. But I have been holding off on doing a video like this just because I don't want to come off, especially on my YouTube channel, I don't want to come off as like I'm bragging or anything. Um, the stuff that I have, there is some cheap stuff, and then there is a little bit more pricey stuff. I'm not bragging um, about anything that I have. I actually think my fishing game is a little bit subpar, but I just wanted to get that off my chest so that you guys know I'm being 100% with you guys. You do not, and I repeat, you do not need all of the stuff that I have, and I'll tell you why. You can get out and catch a lot of fish with a $50 rod and a $50 bait caster and be at that $100 price point. Um, you don't need to go out and get a $500 Steez and then a $550 NRX. Do they help? Yeah, a lot. But you do not need it to go out and start catching fish. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. All that is aside, one more thing. Though. All of the rods, all of the reels that I'm going to be talking about are reels that I am currently using to catch bass and or salmon. And surprisingly enough, uh, carp and trout. So, you know, the couple of Shakespeare Walmart combos that I have, I'm not going to be talking about those for obvious reasons. So without further ado, everybody, let's jump right into the video. I got my reels off of my rod just because it's winter and I took them off. I loosened the drag and I loosened the spool tension, which you guys, if you didn't know, should be doing um, if you're not fishing in the winter, just because you don't want your reel to sit with all that pressure on the spool and the drag. Um, when you're not using it. Uh, it makes a reel last a lot longer if you loosen them when you're not using them So I went ahead and did that and that's why they're not on any of my rods But I think we're gonna start with the rods and I think we're gonna go from cheapest to most expensive Same thing with the reels cheapest to most expensive. All right, so for the first rod we have this was my i believe i believe this was my second ever bait casting combo i say combo because it came with a reel that i'm gonna show you guys here in a second but the rod is what we're talking about now and the rod is the abu garcia vengeance this is a i believe by itself like a 40 dollar rod or so um and then with the combo when it was newer back then i think it ran like i want to say this was a hundred dollar combo honestly maybe i'm wrong maybe it was 80 i'll have to double check that in the editing but uh, um and honestly it's a fantastic beginner rod the thing's stiff as all hell don't get me wrong but it's 24 ton graphite um so it's relatively sensitive it was a pretty well balanced rod it was all right i mean it was hard to beat at the time for the price as you guys see this thing has some battle scars uh i mean you you know it it's gone the, it, it's gone. Also, the, uh, well, I broke the tip, um, and that, ooh. This thing is a little bit more messed up than I thought it was, so I broke the tip off, and I guess that guy that was the first guy is now bent back. Probably not gonna use this rod ever again. However, I did catch, not too long, last season, at Mazonia, I did catch, what was it, a four, six, something? Largemouth, pretty big largemouth on this rod, surprisingly, and it handled it fantastically. It was funny, because I didn't feel the bite, since really not that moving on to rod numero dos now, this rod I, I picked up recently um actually when brian and i went on that east coast journey this is a fenwick eagle uh this is a six six two piece medium and honestly for a travel rod this thing's nice not gonna lie it's nice for 69 bucks is what i bought it for i believe at sportsman's warehouse sensitivity you, you'll feel bites, but but I've caught some nice smallmouth on this. I've caught some nice largemouth on it. Solid, solid rod. I suggest if you guys are looking into getting your first baitcaster to pick one of these up, this is a Fenwick Eagle. But if you guys have any questions on any of the reels, any of the rods that you see in this video, drop them down below and I will definitely answer them. Moving on to number three. Oh, number three is a doozy. So this, I don't know why I have this honestly, but this right here, this big beefy broomstick right here is a favorite fishing, flares, frogging, flipping stick. Uh, this thing 
sucks. The heaviest rod that I have, now granted, hold on, granted this is a 7.3 heavy, but I've picked up 7.3 heavies and 7.5 and 7.6 heavies in bait casters of other brands that are a little bit higher quality and they're like a quarter of the weight, just saying. But anyway, this has the micro guides on it. Micro guides right there. Oh, come on. As you see, the micro guides right there. Um, very, very small. There's just absolutely no tip to this thing, dude. This thing is a broomstick, which means there's only a couple of things that you can do. I wouldn't even really frog with it because it doesn't have a tip to it. You really need it when you're frog fishing. If you guys didn't know, you want a little bit of a softer tip because it makes it a lot easier to walk that frog. It is really hard to walk that frog with this broomstick with no tip. And also, since this rod is so heavy, you know, walking the frog, doing this all day, gets really, really tiring, believe me. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention too, uh, this is gonna be a little bit of a, actually a lot of bit, probably of a longer video. So if you guys don't like the longer videos, you can peace out, that's fine by me. If you guys like the longer videos and you're curious to see what I got, Grab some popcorn, get a drink, because it's going to be a good one. Probably a great punching stick, and that's all good, except for the fact that I live in the Midwest, and we don't do punching up here. We don't do that. Nah, we don't, we don't do that. Come on. Finesse gang. Oh, kidoki. So next up is a spinning rod. This is a 7.6 medium light Cabela's Prodigy spinning rod. This comes in at about 100 bucks, 99.99. It's actually a walleye rod, but I found that it is a fantastic small mouth rod. I can throw spy baits on this thing. I can sling singles on this thing a mile. Sensitivity is fantastic on it for being a hundred bucks. Currently this thing, it was last used for coho fishing. So there's just scales all over this thing. Really good Senko spy bait. Smaller jerk baits like Vision 110 Juniors or next rod that you can find for under 100 bucks but when it was new, retailed for I believe either 119.99 or 100 bucks. I think it was 100 bucks. But uh, this is a Johnny Morris Carbon Light. The Bass Pro Shop Johnny Morris Carbon Light 1.0. This isn't the newer one. Um, the newer one is not as good as this in my opinion. This is half the weight of the newer one and has a lot more sensitivity, honestly. I don't know why they went away with this and went to where they did. This was my first ever baitcaster that I had ever gotten. Um, it was a Christmas present. It was seven foot medium heavy, um, but now it's more like a six eight medium heavy because I broke the tip off of it, which I do pretty regularly, it seems like. <clears throat> but I'm telling you guys, for a $100 rod that you can find for cheaper now, um, this is where it is at. This was my favorite rod. And also that it has some, you know, a little bit of sentimental value to me just because it was my first ever bait cast rod. This is a Tournament ZX rod by Cabela's. This one in particular is a 6'9 medium. This is a jerkbait rod. This is my only jerkbait rod. Um, you can, with that 6'9, it helps a lot, especially when I'm in a float tube. Because if it's too long, that rod tip's gonna smack the water and mess you up. Typically, you would want like a 6'6. My, all my buddies pretty much have 6'6. Six, six. I'm kind of late to the show on that, but that should be changing soon, hopefully. Fantastic stick. Sensitivity is there for 100 bucks. You cannot beat this. It is super, super light. It's got good components on it, ceramic inserts. So, moving on. I'm getting, I'm getting tired, man. Jeez. Yeah. Cabela's XML rod. Now this, my all time favorite spinning rod. I'll actually show you guys the newer gen first before the older gen. Guys, I I'm telling you right now, I'm in love with Cabela's rods and it's just breaking my heart to see them go. Like these guys, the XML is, you can't get anymore, maybe on eBay. This is an extremely light and extremely sensitive rod. This is a 6.8 medium that I have right here. I use this for drop shotting. I'll Ned rig with it. Um, I throw dark sleepers on this thing. I've thrown jerk baits on this thing. It comes with Fuji line guides, so you already know that they're really, really durable and really, really sensitive ceramic inserts. Urban fiber all over this thing. This is pretty much the only spinning reel or spinning rod, I'm sorry, that you guys see me use besides that Prodigy. Mainly because these are the only two spinning rods that I really have that I use. This is uh, the next rod we have is a Ducket. This is a Micro Magic Pro 7.3 medium heavy rod. It comes with micro guides, fantastic all around stick. And I have caught frogfish on this. It walks a frog really well. I've caught jig fish on this. It drags a jig really well. I've thrown jerk baits, crank baits, all sorts of top waters on this thing. And it has performed 
very, very well. It's $159. With the micro guys, this thing casts farther really accurately. The only thing I worry about, and I have not had this rod too long, is the way that the, the guides are set in here. They just don't seem 100% sturdy, and I've heard reviews of on some of the guides actually popping out. But other than that, this thing has been used a lot. So I highly, highly recommend this actually, even though it's sensitive, but it's not the most sensitive rod out there for $159, don't get me wrong, it is not. But if you're looking for an all around rod that has the sensitivity level of six or seven out of 10, maybe a six out of 10, this is your rod. Good stick for $159. God, can I stop hitting that? The next rod we're going to talk about. This is an Arbor Garcia Revo Ike rod. I don't remember what gen this is. Gen 3 maybe? No, it's a Gen 1 actually, I think it is. But it is a cranking stick, so it is a 7.3 medium moderate. Dude, the tip on it is, is kind of amazing. I'm really excited to use that. I've heard a lot of good things on the Gen 1s. I mean, it, I could see it being heavy for some people, but for me, it's really not that heavy, um, but it's not the lightest, if I'm being 100% honest with you. It does come with Fuji guides and Fuji Euro seats on it. It is an HSG or, or high strain glass rod, I should say. That's what it's made out of. Can't give you my full opinion on it yet, just because I haven't caught a fish on it. Okay, second to last. This was a very recent pickup, actually, at the outdoor show, the 2020 outdoor show in Schaumburg. Cash on rod. I've never fished it. Actually, I have fished with one of these before. I have not caught a fish on it, though. I was using my buddies uh, when I was in a float tube. Seven foot, medium heavy, fast action. Well, when I got it at the show, it was 165, but that was a show special. Normally online, they range from anywhere from 180 to 200 bucks. Custom handmade rods. They make them over in North Carolina, actually. And the quality on them, from what I hear from every single one of my friends that has this unmatched for the price and the sensitivity is very very good the handle is a woven carbon fiber i believe it is so instead of having cork there or eva foam there which kind of dampens the sensitivity a little bit having this carbon fiber woven mesh basically ups the sensitivity on it so last but not least is one of my favorite if not my favorite rods that i have right now it's a g Lumis e6x this is a seven foot five medium heavy fast action worm and jig rod full length cork handle so no split grip on this fuji guides fuji real seat this comes in at 200 bucks so this is one that i have is a is a worm and jig rod um which means it's going to be a little bit more stiff because of the fact that you're supposed to fish jigs and uh texas rigs worms or creature baits on this where you need a little bit of a stouter rod to drive that thicker hook into the bass's mouth. Sensitivity on this for $200 is very, very good. Now, is it the best for $200? You know, I don't know. I don't think so though. Real excited to, to play around with different rod companies this, this season and kind of find one that I really, really like. Um, which is why I don't have, except for the Cabela's, I don't have more than one rod from each brand, if you haven't noticed. All right, so that's, that is the rods. We are done talking about those. This video is probably really long already. If you're still here, I do appreciate you. Thank you. Now we're gonna talk about the reels. We're the, we got a we got a we got a damn mess right here. We're gonna start with 13 fishing. Honestly, the only I swear to God, the only reason that I have any of these reels is because of John B. That is it. He used to fish these and he would rave about them, how good they are. Him and Fluke Master used to fish the hell out of these things, and I think Fluke Master still does fish these. They're overpriced. The only good thing about this reel, any of these 13 fishing reels, is the drag. You get 22 pounds of drag. It's a good looking reel, do not get me wrong. This thing looks pretty slick, right? It looks pretty, pretty badass. But looks ain't everything, I tell you that much. Next up, Concept C. The white one doesn't look as good in my opinion as the black one, but still looks pretty slick. Uh, 22 pounds of drag is the exact same. Casting distance on this one is actually a little bit better than that concept. A, um, you're getting a little bit farther of a cast with this. Now this, I don't think is a bad reel, but for $230, I do think there is, this was this is all MSRP by the way, so this isn't what you're gonna pay for it. Now you can find these things for much cheaper. But uh, next up is my first ever, first ever bait cast which was a bass pro shops extreme exm whatever a whole bunch of numbers and letters this was for the time being my only bait cast in my all around everything since i only had one set up this was the reel that i put on that johnny moore's carbonite 1.0 i don't know what it is it's 50 dollars. this is a 50 dollar bait caster now granted now 
after I've been fishing with a lot more expensive stuff than this, it feels like poop. But back then, when it was brand new, this thing was nuts. I'm not gonna talk too much about this one. This was my second baitcaster, Abu Garcia Black Max, for 50 bucks when it was new. This was also kind of hard to beat. Very, very, very tiny handle. Feels like you're reeling a toy. It's still really smooth. I did keep up with this one, so I did uh, grease and oil it when it needed it. So if you guys are looking for a beginner baitcast reel, this is the way to go if you don't want to break the bank. So I think they're running like 30 or 40 bucks now. Next up, I have a Abu Garcia Riva Winch. Yeah, five, four to one gear ratio this is a crankbait specific reel pretty much uh, it's got a lot of drag and it's got that lower gear ratio specifically made for crankbaits really good bearings in it these are all stock bearings this is like a third or fourth hand-me-down um, and it's still running really really good so if that says anything about some of the Abu Garcia stuff and Abu Garcia Revo Premier um, I just recently acquired this not too long ago for an insane price. Um, I have not fished with it yet, but I hear really, really good things about this. 24 pounds of drag. I got it in a 7, 3 to 1 gear ratio. Yes, it's on the right hand side. I am ambidextrous. I do prefer the left, but I couldn't pass it up at the deal that I got it for, so I chose the right. Let's do some spinning. This is a $60 Fluver President and probably one of the best $60 reels on the market, especially for beginners. This thing is really, really nice. It's a little bit heavier. The drag is rock solid and super smooth on this thing. Really, really have not had any complaints with it at all. Um, I really like these reels. I think Fluger is very underrated for their lower dollar spinning stuff. I wouldn't spend over $100 on a Fluger, but for the lower end stuff, this is hard to beat. Really hard to beat. This was a gift. I did not buy this. This is a Lou TP400 HP. This is a giant, this is basically a 4,000 size reel, but I really haven't had any complaint, like mechanical wise, I haven't had really any complaints. The only thing is, is I don't really like Lou's because the reels are one, they're heavier, and two, they're just not built as well as some of the Daiwa in Shimano reels in my opinion please do not get mad at me it's a daiwa legolas or legolas or i call it a legolas but i've heard it called everything 80 dollars brand new you can find it for cheaper now best 80 dollars reel on the market hands down spinning reel i should say this thing has 22 pounds of drag i believe it is and it is one of the smoothest reels i've felt in a very very long time for that price point it's really, really hard to beat. That drag is rock solid, super smooth. It's got a thick bail wire on it, so it's not bending. You don't gotta worry about that. Light frame, but extremely rigid frame, so you get no flex in this thing when you set the hook on a big fish. There's another Daiwa. I believe it's based off of the Daiwa Ballistic, but this is a Cabela's Verano um, made by Daiwa. As you can see, it does look a lot like a Daiwa Ballistic, but it is, it is really, really good. Man, I wonder how long this video is right now. My battery's about to die. This is a Daiwa Tatula CT TWS, so it's got the T-Wing system in it. Um, this is 130 bucks. What, brand new, basically. That's the MSRP of it. This is a 7 3 to 1 gear ratio. You can tell by the red Daiwa color codes, their gear ratios. So gold or orange, whatever you want to call it, yellow is going to be the lowest gear ratio. Uh, red's going to be the mid, and then purple will be the high. A very good reel for 130 bucks. It's really hard to beat. I mean, it's a Daiwa. They're going to be rock solid no matter which one you get. So, let's start this Daiwa. This is a Daiwa Tatula CT Type R. This is a 7.3 to 1 just like that other one um this reel has great casting distance and really good accuracy guys if you haven't tried Daiwa, i can't say enough you guys really got to try their stuff it's it's really good they are insane this is the Daiwa tatula sv tw it's got the sv spool in it which is their finesse spool uh so this thing throws light baits very very well i usually use this for smaller jerk baits and smaller lipless crank baits and stuff like that what you're paying for that 200 versus the 175 of the ct type r is that SV spool in there? It, it's a game changer on backlashes, guys. These things are these things are insane. Okay, you guys getting bored yet? All right, we're gonna go and talk a little bit about some Shimano's. Those are the last group of reels that I have to talk about. So first off, we're gonna start with a Corrado DC. This reel has taken the fishing community by storm as of recent because of the fact that they put a DC chip in a reel that does not cost 700 or 500 bucks. It costs 250. Now that is a little bit much. I mean, that's a lot of money for a lot of us fishermen to pay, but it is well worth it. And in fact, they have a even lower 
budget reel that has a DC chip in it, and that is a new Shimano SLX DC for $190. Same exact DC4 chip in that SLX that is in this chip, so it's going to cast basically the same. The only difference, the little bump up in price is that the Corrado comes with micro module gearing, those real fine gear teeth, the real smooth ones and strong ones, and the normal SLX does not. But that does not at all mean that that is a bad reel. Um, it's a Shimano, so the gears are going to be good no matter what reel it is. Can you guys hear this? Oh. We have yet another Corrado DC. This is a different hand. This is a right hand retrieve. This was the first one I got actually. It doesn't really work. I haven't casted it since I've dropped it in the water multiple times, but uh, it doesn't make that little. It makes that that sound, and that doesn't sound very good. So I don't know if the DC chip still works in this thing, but we'll find out as soon as we get to open water. But. These things are nasty. This is in 6.2 to 1, and the other one that I showed you was an 8.5 eight, to 1, so a real burner of a reel. This guy right here, and as you can see, they're basically identical. Actually, they are pretty much exactly identical. The only difference is that the Corrado DC has a little bit of a lighter paint, the standard Corrado K. This is a 200 size spool, uh, so it's fitting a little bit more line on there than the standard 150 size. It also has shielded bearings in it, so you can theoretically fish this thing in salt water, which I believe Shimano kind of envisioned when they came out with this reel. $179.99, I believe this is. Very good price, really good quality reel. Next up, we have the most expensive Shimano that I have, and that's the Kronach MGL. This is a... $279, I think is what this goes for. The stock bearings, I want you guys to, to, to look at this. The stock bearings on this thing aren't bad at all. That thing's still going and it's gonna go for a while. Um, I'm actually really impressed because I just got a real tune that I'm gonna show you guys. Um, and that thing spins for forever, but for being stock bearings, this is really, really good because it's still going. Hey, if you guys couldn't tell, I don't know, can you can you see? I'm, I'm tired, I'm, I'm very tired. Last, no, we're gonna we're gonna sit down at the table for this last one. So this is the Corrado 70 finesse baitcaster with uh, the upgraded bearings. Watch this. That is literally gonna spin for forever. You know what? <laughs> I'm not gonna even act like that shit didn't just smack my ass. Holy. So that was the Shimano Corrado 70. Very excited to use this thing. This was an underused reel last season, and now that I got the bearing upgrade on it, it should be, uh, well, it should be pretty money. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave that like down below, and if you're new here, subscribe to join the Southside Fishing family. It would mean the world to me, and you guys know it. I'm gonna hop off here. Uh, if you guys got any questions on anything that you saw in the video, you wanna know the price, you wanna know where I got it, leave it in the comments below, and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. What else? Uh, I got a lot of reels I gotta clean up. Oh, guys, if you are not doing so and you have an Instagram, follow me on Instagram, official Southside Fishing. I post a lot of pictures of reels and baits on, on my on my Instagram. So anyways, I'm signing off here. My camera battery is literally about to die. It's blinking at me. I will catch you guys very soon on the next episode of Southside Fishing. Thank you so much for watching and I am out of here.